Tonight, payday, big time for Scott Dixon. All the work, the training, the hard yards. Today, it came together. I talked to him about what it was like taking that final flag and how a fortune teller knew he had it in the bag. G'day everyone, Heidi Mai, welcome to the show. It's Monday the 26th of May, the day on which Scott Dixon won the biggest single prize in motor racing. The kid from Manurewa taking out the Indy 500. Magic. How exciting was it? Watch his wife trying to find him after the race. There's his wife, Emma. She's trying to get, trying to figure out where the heck Victory Lane is, I imagine. Oops, lost my shoe. Got to get going. Take them off. What the heck? So, Scott's pulling in and Emma's not quite sure where he is. One shoe off, one shoe on, she's running down pit lane. A quick kiss for one of the crew and then she's off again. And then there's Scott being interviewed. Watch this, she pops in just at the left there but she sees he's busy and goes to leave and then Scott sees her. Come here, Emma. And in a way, this is a sort of motor racing fairy tale. Scott Dixon, the kid we all remember from the 90s, so small he had to strap a cushion under his bum so he could reach the steering wheel. Now, well, I asked him what it's like to be the best in the world. It was pretty special, man. There's, there's uh, no doubt about it. I think it's, you know, that the whole last, you know, sort of lap coming in, um, you, you kind of, you know, there's so many things running through your mind and there's people coming on the radio like, congratulations, yeah, you know, yeah. and... and uh, you know, it's, it was just strange, you know, you, you can't believe that it's finally over, that the, the day is, you know, finished uh, the way you wanted it, but uh, at that point you just can't wait to get back to the pits. You want to see the people that help you get to that position and help win that race and, you know, to see, you know, see my wife and, and see my family and friends that have been here and, and have come from New Zealand uh, so far away was, uh, was the best part of the day. Hmm. Yeah, that was a magic moment when your wife found you. I, you wouldn't have seen all this, but there she was sprinting down pit lane with one shoe off and one shoe on and then she found you man she was proud of you <laughs> <laughs> She is, you know, and she's, uh, she's, you know, a competitor at heart too, you know, she was uh, uh, a runner for the British team and, and the Commonwealth and and, uh, and things like that, an 800 metre specialist, so, you know, Emma uh, knows what it's all about, you know, she knows what racing's all about, and, you know, for her, uh, you know, to see so much excitement and so much emotion uh, from her was fantastic, but mm -hmm. she uh, is just a, a great woman and, and uh, you know, definitely getting married in, in February earlier this year was, was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> Yeah, and this must have been another one, Scott. I mean, there you are, the Indy 500 winner. You know, the kid from South Auckland, and right now you are on top of the motor racing world. It's pretty strange, you know. It definitely come a long way from from South Auckland hmm. and uh, Manurewa, and and uh, you know all the schools I went out there, you know, went to back there, and and uh, you know the, the the friends that I've have, hmm. you know, back there. You know, for me, it's you know it's still a tough part because you don't get to see these people anymore, and you know you, those were my roots, are, man. That's hmm. where I came from, and and uh, I definitely don't forget about that. It's just so hard to get back and see those people, and, and so many friends that I went to school with, uh, you know, they get to catch up with maybe two, you know, two or three days a year. Uh, when I do get back for Christmas, but it's uh, it's it's a long, a long, long yeah. way away from uh, you know where I was and, and maybe being uh, you know seven years old and just starting out in go karts. It's, it's come a long way, man. No, you can't go much further, really. Did you dream of the Scott when you were that seven-year-old? You know that cute kid we all remember with freckles and that huge smile racing go karts, like your life depended on it. Did you dream of this? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, you must be confusing me with somebody else. I was a little chubby kid, right, with the, with the, with the cushion tied to my bum and, and, and having a little bit of a cry after I rolled a car. But, no, it's, uh, it's come a long way. But, you know, you never, you, you always dream of, of uh, you know, of doing well and, and uh, competing in, 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 you know, different levels. And, mm -hmm. and Formula One was just, you know, definitely an aspiration when I was, was, was young. And, and uh, you know, IndyCar, when I first came to America, was something that I'd love to be a part of. And, you know, to be at the pinnacle of motor racing and, and actually win the biggest uh, one-day sporting event in the world. Wow. Uh, there's just, just no words for it, man. Mm. Hey, Scott, I hear this wonderful story uh, that your wife went to a fortune teller and was told you were going to win the Indy 500. Is that true or is it such a good story that someone's just made it up? 
No, it's true, man. She <laughs> loves all her fortune telling, hand reading, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, she actually saw the fortune teller last year. And, um, you know, they said, yeah, he's definitely going to win the race. Um, but she never told me the part where they said he's not going to win it this year. <laughs> and that was last year. Uh, but she said that, that uh, he's definitely going to win it. And, and uh, you know, that, that, you know, I didn't like hearing that at the <laughs> point when she did tell me. But luckily it was after the race last year. I'm like, thank God you didn't tell me before the race. But... I'm always, I'm always like, uh, I don't know about that stuff, but uh, you know, there's definitely, uh, you know, there's got to be some truth to it, right? Well, well there was in this case. Uh, hey, Scott, you're racing with Honda, yeah. and, and, and you're racing in the States, and yet you're being described far and wide as a Kiwi and New Zealander. Even the BBC has the headline, I think, Kiwi Scott Dixon wins the Indy 500. Are you proud of that? Yeah, it does. You know, I think, uh, you know, New Zealand's such a, a fantastic place, um, you know, and, and so many people, that's a lot, you know, thing I love about living, uh, you know, in different parts of the world is, is, you know, people that have traveled there, you know, you have, you can talk about such great things, you know, it's such a, a beautiful place. Uh, there's such, everybody just raves about the people when they go, uh, you know, all the tourists that go down there and, and talk about it, um, you know, it's, you just see their, their eyes light up when, uh, when, they, when they're talking about New Zealand. So, you know, to me, to, to you know, fly a flag so far away here in America, and, and uh, you know, most Americans think we're part of Australia, man. So it's nice to it's nice to put it on the map and uh, just show you where we actually come from. Well, well done, Scott. We're all really proud of you. Lovely to talk to you. Thanks so much for your time just after the race, and congratulations from all of us back here. Awesome. Thank you very much, and uh, definitely big thanks to, to everybody back home in New Zealand and, and for the support that uh, they've given me. I know it's tough. I, I never get back home and, and never get to thank too many people, but thank you very much. Scott Dixon, later in the program, we tour the 